welcome to the Startup Superhero Series. I'm Heidi Hubling of Stubbs Alderton and Merkley's Pre-Celerator Program. Today we're featuring Sue Funkhauser. Sue is one of our mentors that specializes in co corporate culture. Good to have you. So great to be here. And working with you for the last three years has just been great. Yeah, it's gone back so quickly. Gone back. <laughs> it has. So my background is that I, um, for the tw last 12 years, have been working with companies and leaders around their own leadership style, team effectiveness, and looking at the organization as a whole, because culture is an organization as a whole. I have a master's in degree from Pepperdine University, their business school, and that really taught me how to look at an organization through a systems lens, and how does everything work together, and that is how I approach my own work. So you've been really beneficial to a lot of the companies, and we know that corporate culture can be their trigger for great success for a company long term, or a trigger for um, for failure, and it's one of those foundational items that these startup companies need to know. Right. So why is corporate uh, culture so important? It's your competitive advantage, and it's been proven in the marketplace. So there's been research that shows that if you have an effective better, healthier culture, you'll get greater financial returns. We can look at Money Magazine's research that shows that there's a 23% more financial return um, based on having a healthy, effective culture. There's others if you want to know. But besides the financial research, it's something that can't be replicated, can't be duplicated. Not one culture is the same as the next. So your products and your capabilities can be copied, but your cultures can. And the last thing is it acts as a magnet. You want to attract your people. So if you have a healthy, well-performing culture, you're going to attract your top talent as well as retain them. So one of the things that is a bedrock um, in, in company culture is the value systems of the company. Mm -hmm. So how do you work with organizations to develop their value systems? Well, it's always helpful to have a framework for people to look at. So I developed an acronym called WE ARE. So imagine a license plate calling WE ARE. And it's WE embody. So what is as a group and body, and then art articulate, articulate your values, reinforce your values, and evaluate. So I want to say one thing about the we and body. So you have a culture no matter what, and you want to find out as a collective what is most important here. And please never, I always tell founders this, don't take a piece of paper with like words on and say, oh, we're this, this, this. Ask questions and stories about like when have you made the most difficult discovery decisions and what's been most important and what have you weighed and that's a way to draw that out. Mm -hmm. So I use, I have processes at each part of the we are, but I think that's an important way that you need to, what do you embody, well, how do you articulate that value, how do you reinforce it, and then later how do you evaluate it? Very, very important for um, companies building that foundation for the long term you know, strategy of their, of their company. I think it's a, a very powerful tool. Um, how do you build, what are some of the advice that you give for companies wanting to build high performing teams? High performing teams. So one of the things I like to talk to founders about is first <laughs> to understand that teams develop much like individuals do. There are normal developmental stages for teams because they'll sometimes complain like, oh, it's this, this, this. I'm like, it's natural because teams form and then they'll storm and then they'll have to settle down a norm of how they work with each other and then they'll get to perform. I remember I was working with a leader and he was describing the stuff and they're like, well, they're just storming. It's like, well, what's that? And I was like, well, they're trying to figure out how to work together and actually you need that if you're gonna get them to perform. So that's the first thing I tell people, like just know it's normal and you need it. And then another thing is that what I have found, I usually interview people before I go work with a team and I have found that a lot of people think it's all about interpersonal, like the problems are all interpersonal. But as soon as we start working around what is your common purpose or mission, what are the role clarities, and what are the expectations of each other, a lot of that strife goes away. Okay. So those are just two things. I could talk all day, but <laughs> those are just two things. So as a company grows in size, what are some of the struggles that you find that founders struggle with the most? <sighs> There's a lot to struggle with. One, one, I think, common theme is about letting go, and in a couple of ways. First, as a, in kind of a cognitive sense, leaders as they grow need to let go of control and they have to move from being a tactician to being a strategist. Mm -hmm. And I was talking with late Dave, David Goldberg, you know, mm -hmm. the former CEO of um, SurveyMonkey, and he said in his first venture when they went from 20 to 50 employees, the hardest thing for him 
was to actually let go of the reins. Right. So that's one thing, but that's in the head. What's actually the most heart-wrenching thing that founders find is that they have to let go of their early loyal employees. So what happens is, as a company grows, some employees can't scale their capabilities. You know, you might try to develop them and move them around and mentor, but they just can't. Right. Or they're not, they're, they're not, for scaling company, they don't fit. That's not where their interest is. So it's so heart-wrenching. Every founder I've talked to is like, this person's been with you since day one. But the fact of the matter is that if you don't let them go, there's going to be some repercussions. Mm -hmm. So one example, I was working with a company in New York, and the CEO, Heart of Gold, and, but when I interviewed his team, he was like, for, t for two years we've been shuffling these three people around to every single department, and the high performers that I was talking to, they were like, we don't have time to babysit. They're getting in the way, and man, he's just got to cut it. I mean, even though it's not. So it impedes performance, and as Ivy Steinleif told me from um, Edmunds.com is, you know what you got. It's hard, but you got to do what's right for the company. So what I advise people to do is how they let the early people go that they have to is um, do it in a way that shows that you care. And you do care. So call up your buddies and say, hey, I know this person. They're really good at this, this, and this. Would you meet with this person? Because you might know someone, or you might have an opportunity. Right. And then go to that person with a list of, these are the five people I've talked to. They're ready to take your call. Very difficult, but very impactful advice. Because I think that's a very, it's a tough situation when a company gets to that stage of growth. And you still want to have, the way that you respond is also affects your company culture overall, right? It's a yeah. testament to, to what that uh, And those is. stories will ripple. Right. Yeah. Right. It will affect everyone. Yes. Um, so you've been a mentor of the program for a couple of years now. It's gone yeah. by really quickly. Um, what is uh, what is the biggest uh, give back to you? What do you enjoy most? Oh, my God. I love coming in here. And thank you for having me. Um, like, I just met with this new company who I'd never met with before. and. We were supposed to meet for 20 minutes. We are met for like an hour and a half. I mean, it was fabulous. And what I love is that I learned so much. I get to meet hot entrepreneurs that are wanting to leash, unleash stuff in the world. And I get to learn about the new technology. I get my things opened. And then just our interactions and the, the ability in such a short time, even though we expanded it, to have fun, to get to know each other, but to have an impact and help them they're preparing for something this afternoon, and they've got it. Right. It's so great. I just love it. And thank you so yes, much. I love hearing that. So we very much appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you guys next time with the Startup Superhero Series. <laughs>